Good Hebrew Israelites, we come in week in and week out, Shabbat in and Shabbat out, man, to bring out the word, man. You know what I'm saying? To rock this wicked nation. You know what I'm saying? To wake up the dry bones in the valley of the shadow of death, right? Right? We the Hebrew Israelites from the WF5 set. We out here, man, to bring out this word, man, to prophesy the downfall of this wicked kingdom, man. Right? And bring our people back to the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> right? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh. Hashem, Amashiach, Wamalaki, Hawashah, right? Right? So, we living in the last days, man. We living in the last days, and it's time to wake up, right? It ain't no more time for playing, man, in these last days, man. The Most High has been sending out prophecies, man, and signs in the heavens and in the earth, right? Blood moon after blood moon, right? Wars and rumors of wars, man, going on, right? New pestilences on the rise, man. Hospitals are spilling up again, man. You know what I'm saying? Seditions among the nations, man. People rebelling against their governments. And all sorts of men are wickedness, man. You know, animals all throughout the earth, man, doing all kind of weird things, you know what I'm saying, going in circles and circles until they drop dead, you know, men losing themselves, man, their minds, and, you know, there's been a lot of mass murders and shootings and things like that, you know, and it's not stopping, man, it's only getting worse, right, and the most I said, these things are going to happen in these last days, man, and us as a people, man, the Israelites, we can't be worried about the worldly or the carnal things right in the world we can't be having our minds set on things that are not profitable for us yet we do understand that yes we do have to work we do have certain things that we have to do you know in order to survive in these times but at the same time you know we have a job to do right we have to wake up the lost sheep man you understand because before you know it all this that you see is going to burn up all this stuff is venting. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be here forever, man. So you need to set your mind on things above, man, and not on, on uh, beneath, right? And the lesson of the night is on being content. You understand? We got to be content in where we at, man, and stop stressing so much about foolishness, man. Foolishness, that's just vanity to the eyes of the Most High, man. Right? And these things are not going to be so for too long. You got a piece of paper? Come on, bring it up. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 36. Right. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, right. and not unto covetousness. Read that again. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. Right. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, right. and quicken me thou in thy way. That's right, man. We got to turn our eyes from vanity, man, for things that there's no profit in. Right? We're constantly worried about the next bill. You know, we're constantly worried about what's going on in the world, what's going on in social media, man. Who did this? Who did that? Who said this? Who said that? You know, now you got the things going on in social media about Ricky Griner being brought home and made for an exchange for a tyrant. You know, an evil, wicked Edomite, man. And what we got to understand is all these things is ordered by the Most High anyway, man. Everything is set up by the Most High, man. He has them set in their own traps and they're falling within themselves. So this man, Biden, has given up a wicked tyrant to a tyrant nation that is set against him. Right? But the heart of the king is in the hand of the Most High, man. He turned it whichever he will. Right? And this is what the Most High does, right? But we're going to kick it off. Give me Philippians 4 and 11 real quick. The book of Philippians 4 and 11. All right. You give me something like that too. All right. We've got to be content in these last things with what we have. And know that everything else is better. Right? Read that, man. This is the book of Philippians. Chapter 4, verse 11. Bring it out. 
Not that I speak in respect of what I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. To be what? To be content. Right. And that's it, man. We speak not in respect of what, man. We can't always be out here walking and walking and walking and gotta have with that covetous spirit, man. You know, back in the day when we was kids, man, we used to see kids, we used to see uh, cars and cool bikes and, 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 and uh, you know, scooters and things like that. We used to say things like key lock. You know what I'm saying? Because we wanted those things. You know, but we didn't realize that those things are, are vanity, man. Those things mean absolutely nothing. Those things are not profitable in our salvation, man. So the most I said that we have to be content in these last days, man. Because this is not our home and this is not where we set our foot to, to sleep. This is not where we want to stay. This is a place for our precious. We were sent here for basically a jail sentence. Right? We were sent here to be destroyed and devoured, well not necessarily destroyed, but to be set right. A cool ass whooping, man. We on ground basin, man. The Most High sent us here and grounded us, man, for all wicked works, man. Right. And the things we've done, man. Read that one more time, man. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11. Right. Not that I speak in respect of what, right. for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. And we gotta be content. Really. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. That's right. Both to abound and to suffer me. That's right. And that's what it, man. Right? We gotta know in every state that we in, man, that we gotta know this is it. We can deal with this. Right? It don't have to be much more, man. But as soon as the Messiah comes back, man. That's where we will receive our rest. Everything that we've been promised, right? But we have to endure nevertheless, man. We have to do the things that are required of us, man. But while we're here, we got to learn to deal. When we suffer, many people is always out. Every time the word comes out, they want to do that. You know, just wait. But nevertheless, man, the word must go out, man. Like I said, we got to be content in everything we do, man. Right? And we can't be dragging our feet in this thing either, man. We got to be wholeheartedly, we got to be full in effect, man, in this thing, man. Right? The horse of the righteous acts, man, in all things, man. Right? Bring that out, man, if he's asking. This the book is all right. Chapter 2 from the top. Right. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare the, thy soul for temptation. Right. Set thy heart aright right. and constantly endure. That's what we got to do, man. In our state of trouble, man, and in in, in all the foolishness and the things that we go through, we have to constantly, constantly, constantly endure hardship, right? Troubled times, man, oppression, right? And understand that, look, these things are not going to be like this forever as long as we turn our face and come back to the Heavenly Father in these last days, man. You know what I'm saying? We have got to turn our foot to the righteous path, man, by keeping these laws, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, man, and getting back to His Word. Right? We don't. Verse 3, what's like it? Verse 2, that thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. And make not haste in time of trouble. And that's what we go wrong at, man. Every time something comes up, a problem hits, something bad happens to you, a stressful situation, what do we do? We make haste. We start stressing out. We start flipping out. We start coming to every other method of escaping the reality besides going to the Heavenly Father, right? We want to pick up blunts and roll up weed, man. We want to listen to wicked music and sit back and, you know, open the bottle. 
and break our sorrows away, man. Just to wake up and understand that it's going to be right there waiting for us when we sober up. Right? People want to put powder in their nose, man. Shoot up their veins, man. Uh, a vote become a whoremonger and sex it away. You know, anything opposite from calling on the Heavenly Father, man, in these last days, man. Anything opposite. Right? But the most I said, well, anywhere you go, besides coming to me, you go any other way, you're a thief or you're a robber, man. In his eyes, man. You can't come any other way but by the Lord of Mashiach Yahweh Shah. Right? That's the only way you're going to get to the Father, man, is by coming back to these commandments and following the laws that Yahweh Shah had came and perfected and left us an example to follow in order to get to the Most High, man. Right? Read on. Verse 3. Leave it to him and depart not away. That thou mayest be increased in thy last end. That's the thing, man. We gotta understand in our last end, man, if we do what's right, man, and follow that righteous path, we get an increase in the end, man. You know, that's one thing that, you know, I myself sometimes have to listen to and, and remember and I harp about quite a bit is because, you know, stressful times come and we've been in this in this flesh. It's gonna come that, you know, that time where you get weak. You get weary, you get tired, man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get tired. You know, but you have to continue to fight, man, and move forward, man, and understand, man, if I do this and I keep moving, eventually, man, I'm going to be increased at the end. But we got to keep that in mind, man, and really believe that, man, because the most I said it's impossible to please him without faith. We have to have faith, man, in these last days, man. That's what we should be praying for constantly, is faith, to be content in the state of man. Right, we don't. Verse 4. Right. Whatsoever is brought up, it's like here. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, say cheerfully. What the Lord say? Whatsoever is brought upon thee, say cheerfully. Right. And be patient with thou art changed to a low state. And that's what we have to practice, man, is patience. That's a key word, man, that Israel really needs to understand and get into their hearts is patience, man. And that's something that's hard for so-called Black Hispanic and Native Americans, man. Patience. We have to exert patience in these last days, man. Right? We got some good freedom. Look at Job, chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed to, for his friends also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. That's right, man. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful account, man. Through all the affliction that Job went through, man, losing his family, man, his riches, man, and being touched with diseases, boils, all these things, man. Job was a rich man. He was happy, man. That man was everything, man. But the Most High put him through that fire to see where his faith was, and Job stood strong, man. He, he was weak in the flesh at times, man. But Job's integrity, man, he kept that nonetheless, right? We won't. Uh, verse 12. Come on, King. Uh, right. Verse 12. For the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. That's right, man. He was increased at the last, man, because he suffered through his affliction. But he had patience, man, when he was changed to a lower state, right? And he turned back to the heavenly father because he knew, nonetheless, I serve the most high in all my good times. Well, guess what? I got to serve him in my bad times too, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't just give the glory to the most high when everything is going right. You got to do much more when things are going wrong, man. Right? When things are stopping, when they, when it's not going like you want it to, when everything is falling, when you get that, that, that feeling of, I can't stop, I can't wait for losing, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep fighting, man. Nonetheless, you got something to yeah. This is the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 5. For right. those disputes of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. You got to get away from the kind of people that are not man. Hey, hey. That's all they feel like, man. I've got to get, I've got to get, I've got to get, man. 
you gotta separate from that man that hustling spirit man on the left hand side anyway man you can be a righteous hustler you know what i'm saying but on the left hand side man you gotta separate yourself from them people man right real verse six but godliness with contentment is great gain that's it man godliness with contentment man being content man that's great gain man but you can man keep going when you have nothing left in the tank when you have absolutely nothing and you can keep moving that's godly game man that's it you know what i'm saying when there's nothing left that's like you've been on the football field man and you've been playing and playing man and you, you, your arms are hurt man your elbows have been hit too many times your arms is dead your knees have been hit they've been turning you up man but hey your number got called again and guess what? The night, the, the game is on the line, man, and then it's up to you to get this score. You five yards away. What you gonna do? You ain't got nothing left in the tank, man. What you gonna do, man? You know what I'm saying? We go. Verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Right, man. Right, you was born in here naked, and guess what? You gonna leave naked spiritually because you ain't can't take nothing with you. All your riches, everything that you obtain on this earthly plane, you can't take nothing with you. You know what I'm saying? When you go back to the heavenly Father, man, he, he ain't taking nothing but your spirit. That's it, man. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta understand that and remember that, man. You gotta get this in your mind. You know, you gotta embed this into your spirit, man. Right, read what you got, man. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 14 and verse 14. They go from the border thought. They go from the border thought. Cast away the verdicts of men. Put, put off now the weak nature. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. That's it, man. We gotta put off these mortal thoughts, man, and the weak nature, man. This this is humanly these, these, these feelings, man, and these thoughts and this weakness that we have, man. You understand that? Understand that this is, you know, this is a lot of this stuff is of Satan, man. He put that stuff in your mind that you can't obtain this. You can't get this. You understand? Well, you're a loser. You had all this, but guess what? You lost it. So now what? You understand? So now what? Right? He is built to do these things, man. But the thing is that you're not supposed to allow that to happen. You're supposed to rebuke Satan. Right. Resist Satan and he'll flee from you. Right. right? You have to let go of the mortal thoughts, man, and all the things that, you know, bother you. You know, on this earthly, on this mortal plane. And, you know, you got to keep fighting for what you, what you know is right, man. You got to be content with everything you have, man, right here, right? It's okay to have certain things, man, on a mortal level. It, it, it's, it's okay. But don't put your trust in these things, man. You know what I'm saying? These things are vanity, man. You know what I'm saying? You got something else? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or where which shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. That's right, man. The Most High already knows what you need, man, and what you have. Right? You have got to know that the Most High knows what you already. I mean, He created you. What else would? I mean, you know what I'm saying? You think that look? The most high don't know what you what you have need of, he know that you can't pay that bill, right? Or you got a sick element in your body that you need some your doctor to help you out or whatever. Right? He understands that because he gave that to you. To see what you was gonna do with it. Are you gonna glory through your infirmities, man? Are you gonna keep that faith when everything is dark? When your lights get cut out, man? You got to sit in your house for a day or two without no lights, man, or no water. You going to give up? Right. Or you going to call out to the most high, man, and know that he got you, right? We on. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of the most high right. and his righteousness, 
and all these things shall be added unto you. That's it, man. You got to seek what's above, man. The kingdom of the Most High, man. You got to seek his righteousness, man. What is righteousness? But keeping the law, man. Right? You have got to keep those things, man. To be able to come to your success, man. Or else you'll be forever oppressed, man. And everything you do, you'll be constantly oppressed, man. And everything. He already said that, man. Because he put you through these curses, man. Right? That you would be constantly oppressed. If you wouldn't turn to him, man. Right? This is the book of Sarek, chapter 30 and verse 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Right. And afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. And that's it, man. I hope people like, we like to take counsel, but not of the most high, man. A lot of times we inflict ourselves in our own counsel, man, we be in our own mind and our own feelings, right. feeling like we can handle the situation. That's when that pride gets built up within us, man, and then we start, you know, I got this, man, I, I've been through this before, and I've done this, and I've done that, and I ain't got to call on nobody, I, you know, and it's slick. A lot of brothers and sisters be embarrassed. A lot of times, man, or the things they've gone through, man, or things that's happening, man, and they refuse to reach out, man. But the most high said pride goes before a hearty fall, man. Right? Your pride, at the latter end of your pride is destruction. It's failure in the end, man. And you cannot indulge in pride because that's a spirit, man. You know, and the most high, that's one thing he hates. Right, is a prideful man or a woman, right? Because ultimately, when you have that proud spirit on you, your mind is not on the Most High and His ways. Period. You. You're not thinking about it because pride sets you away from that, man. Right? That's your line of defense. It's calling on the Most High, man. Sending up prayers because if you're full of pride, you're not praying. When you're full of pride, you're not fasting. When you're full of pride, you're not reading. Your mind is not worried about the things that are above. You're thinking about right now. How can I get this money to pay this bill, man? Damn, they repaid my car, man. I'm trying to get it out. What can I do? Instead of throwing up a prayer and saying, you know, okay, you how about send me outside trusting you? No matter what is going on, I'm going to trust in you. Nevertheless, I'm going to keep on hustling, but at the same time, I know that you are the one that makes the way. And it's not of me. Everything is of you, man. Right? Read on it. Verse 22. The gladness of heart is the life of man. Right. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. That's the thing, man. When a man is joyful, man, he's upbeat. He has energy. He's moving. He's doing things. Right? He's serving the Most High. Man, but when he's heavy at heart, meaning your mind, you stoop, you're low, you're in a dark place, you're quiet, you might start binge eating, or start binge watching shows, little sad shows, or you're sitting in a locked room and your, your covers, you're bundled up, you're crying, your health is deteriorating, right? And that's how you get sick when you're, you, you stop doing certain things, or you stop moving, you stop being active, right in your physical body then you start getting sick and broken down right and even in your spiritual body man you start losing things man right you start losing that hope and that faith that you once had man that things that you were strong in you start to lose these certain things man and you start getting disturbed and then you invite demons in man to feed on you and fester on you right and make it worse right and then you start getting real heavy-minded, man. And then at the latter end, you perish. Right? You perish for the lack of hope, man, and lack of faith. Right? Without being content with the things that you have, right? You got some? Right, read that. Mr. Book of Sirach, chapter 14 and verse 2. Read Blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him. Blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him. And whose hope is not fallen from the Lord. That's it, man. That's a powerful scripture, man. right? Blessed is the man whose conscience is not condemning, man. 
When you're not condemned in anything, you know what I'm saying? When you fall, man, you make a mistake, you go off, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you beat yourself up for a little bit, but guess what? You get back up and you keep moving, man. Understand, okay, well, there's nothing else I can do. I got to be content with the ways that the most I had me go. It happened. I gave myself over to that wickedness, but guess what? I got to get back up and keep moving, man. Right? I can't wallow in the mud that I'm in, man. I got to dig myself out and I got to keep moving, man, because the scripture tell you, just man falls seven times, man, but he's going to get back up. Because he understands that I'm protect with what happened. And I can't change that now, so guess what? I have to get up and keep moving, man. I got to keep running with the person towards the mark, because if I give up and I just sit still and I stand and not move now, then it's over with, man. And I might as well be laying in the grave and I'm being trouble. It's over for me. And there's nothing else that you can do because you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna go through things, man. The most I said, man, you're not, you're not gonna, you think the most I just gonna say, all right, well, come on into my kingdom, man. I got it for you. It's open. Just come on, walk on in, man. La ah, man. He said there's a fire on one side and there's a deep water on the other. And the path to go through is very narrow. He said it's so narrow that it is so hard that a rich man, it's like, Passing a camel through the eye of a needle. That's how hard it is for even a rich man to get in. A rich man can't pay his way because his money means nothing to the most high, man. Right? So we have to continue to be the tip man and everything you got going on. But what's coming style, Esau? What's going on? Man, we talking to our people out here, man. You know what I'm saying? We raised enough to black, Hispanic, and Native American in these last days of getting them ready to put devils like you in the captivity, man. What you think about that? I mean, there's an NSFW innuendo there about BSM and bondage, but I don't want to go that route. Oh, yeah, but I'm going to show you what the Lord said. Give me Revelation 13 and 10 real quick. I'm going to show you something real quick. Yeah. Right, because, uh, Turn that around for me real quick. I'm going to show you something. Since you walked up here, man, I have to teach you something real quick. I'm going to take you to school. What's your name, man? What's your this? First of all, what's your nationality, man? My nationality? Yeah. Uh, of what I know, I'm Hispanic. Yeah. Uh, European descent. One of my ancestors was a monastery over in the UK. So you're from Europe, European descent, right? Okay, well, according to history, man, right, your ancestors, your European ancestor took my ancestors into captivity, right? And uh, did you believe in something called karma? I know it was, as far as I know, the Spaniards who first started conquering at the slave trade. Right. Spanish right, but guess what? Spaniards are also Caucasians. Yes. Right? So that don't mean nothing. All Caucasians are the same. If you Russian, European, Spaniard, you from Greece, wherever, you're a so-called white man. Right? The devil that the Bible speaks of, man. And I'm going to tell you something real quick, right? I'm going to give you a little bit. You believe in the Bible, man? I ain't talking about religion, I said the Bible, the Bible don't have nothing to do with religion. And we not religious people up here. So I do understand that religion is man-made. So you are correct. But it is man-made though. Religion is man-made. Right, but I'm going to read you something real quick. Read that. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 6 and verse 7. Right now. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So the most I said, don't be deceived, Esau. He's not mocked, man. Whatever a man puts forth in life, he's going to get back, right? You believe in the Carmel principle? I believe in the law of equivalent exchange. Right, okay, okay. Pretty much the same thing. What you do is going to come back to you, right? If you do something to somebody, it's going to come back to you, right? So what you think about this right here? What your ancestors did to my ancestors, man. They hung them from trees, man. They beat their backs. They sold us into bondage. They put feathers of iron on my grandpa's neck, man, right? What you think about that? As in the past? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and uh, 8, I believe. Right? Okay. And that was why 
nation on Yes, exactly. That was an in-house problem. But when you have nation against nation, that's an act of war. Right? right? Well, hold your story, partner. I want to read you something real quick. Hold your story real quick. Uh, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 8. Oh, yeah. A time to love and it's... Oh, you go, um, I'm required to pass. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 3, 15. Right. That which has been is now, right. and that which is to be hath already been, right. and God requires that which is past. The most high God requires that which is in the past, man. Right? Because his judgment is like a ring and it goes around in a circle. You ever heard something that says good what goes around comes around? Right? So your ancestors, man. What's your name? Yeah, what is your name? Klein. Oh. Klein. Klein. Yeah, all right. Well, check it out, man. Sweet Klein. Check this out. Your ancestors took my ancestors in captivity, right? So I'm going to read something to you real quick. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is what the saints are patiently waiting for, man. It's the free truth. Michael, well guess what? The prophet Michael that's in the Bible ain't got nothing to do with you. He ain't got nothing to do with you. So you can be named about him all you want to, but guess what? It means the nothing. Prophet Michael wrote his book from captivity. You saw what? Because he was my people. He was a part of my people. Okay. Right? That went into captivity. Right? No. Hey, all right, dog. Hey. To do that. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 21. Right. Prepare slaughter. Prepare what? Prepare slaughter right. for his children. For who? For, for his, his children. children. Right. You are the children of those ancestors that took my ancestors in captivity, man. Right. So the Lord said prepare slaughter for you. Why? Uh, for the iniquity of their fathers. For the sin of your forefathers. That they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. The most I said, man, every time you build, all these buildings that your, your ancestors and your people build, he's going to throw down in the latter days, man. He's going to destroy your kingdom, man. America is your kingdom, man. And you walk in on stolen land, man. Like, you can walk around in Taco Bell and get you a pop, walk around and get you some food. But guess what? You walking on the bones of my ancestors right now, man. Right? And you know what's going to happen for that? I want you to listen to this real quick, right? This is the book of Numbers, chapter 35 and verse 33. So ye, not, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. So the Lord said, you know, the land that you go and you possess, you're not supposed to pollute it, right? But would you say this land is polluted with blood? Okay, all right, good. For blood, it developed the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein. This land cannot be cleansed for the blood that shed, but how? But by the blood of him that shed it. What the Lord say? But by the blood of him that shed it. That's right. You going into captivity, white boy. And when it's over with, I'm going to put my boot on the back of your neck, man. And I'm going to have you in my cotton field for 23 hours of the day. And I'm going to be so weak to you. I'm going to move an hour away from my plantation, and I'm going to make you walk hard. As soon as you get here, you're going to have an hour to rest. And when you get done, you got to walk back, boy. And you're going to have 23 more hours to pick the cotton that I sent you out there to get. And you better have enough, because if you don't, I'm going to kill you, man. That's right. That said the Lord, man. Prepare your soul for captivity, man. Right? Peace out, we this is the book of Jeremiah. Alright, get ready for slavery. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 16. And it reads. It says, Therefore, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. What the Lord say? And all it's like therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Captivity. 
all of y'all going into captivity, man. Every last one, your grandma, your mother, your pops, your little ugly sister, they all going that way. That's right. Thus said the Lord. <laughs> and how about send me out a shot, man? Right? All right, let me get there. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 21, and verse 16. And he that stealeth a man, right. and selleth him, right. or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. The Lord said, man, he shall surely be put to death. Because they stole it from the west shores of Africa, man. And our brothers that was already over here, they raped, robbed, and murdered over 77 million of them, man. And didn't even have the nerve to, to, to put them in proper graves, man. Put them in massive graves, throwing them on top of each other, giving them smallpox blankets, man. Send them across the country, man, walking, right, still in their land. After they taught them how to do agriculture, man, to build, right, plant, broke so many treaties, right, and had a sword behind their back, but yet a hand sent forth to shake and a wicked smile, but destroyed my people, man. And they got to pay for that, man. Thus said the Lord, man. Right? We're not playing with no heathens in these last days, man. There's no playing no games, man. You got to go that way. And that's what the saints are patiently waiting for, man. But nevertheless, man, back to the back to the lesson, man. What I had you hold, man. That's I like 11. I like 11 and uh, 25. And Acts, oh, Acts 14, 22. We did it, man. Book of Acts, chapter 14 and verse 22. Confirming the soul of the disciples right. and exhorting them to continue in faith. Right. And that we must that like it, that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And that's it, man. Through much, much tribulation, man, we're gonna enter into the kingdom of God, man. A tribulation, man, is a lot of trouble, man. It's, it's a lot of affliction that we have to go through, man in order to make it to the kingdom of heaven, man, right? We have got to be content with everything that we have right now, man, and understand that there's going to be problems arise, man, right? Tell the world, it's a car, man. Hey, you a so-called Hispanic, man? Huh? Jewish? Oh, man. Man, anyway, okay. All right, then. Shalom. Huh? I ain't heard nothing you said, Amalek, but check it out, a few Jews. Man, look, let me tell you something, man. You looking at the real Jews standing before you, man. Yes, you're not a Jew, you're a devil, man. Yes, yeah, you remember that. All right, Shalom, man. Get up out of here, man, before you get hit. Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, yep. Yeah. devils boy i tell you man they out of control but anyway man we go one more time okay it's the book of acts chapter 14 and verse 22 confirming the soul of the disciples right. and exhorting them to continue in the faith right. and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god It said we must, through much tribulation, man, enter into the kingdom of God, man. It's a must. It ain't maybe or it could be. It's a must that we're going to enter into the kingdom, man, through much tribulation, man. We're going to be maimed and beat up. One ear might be hanging off. You know what I'm saying? Ankle break. All kind of things, man. But guess what? Nevertheless, man, we keep the faith of the Most High. You how about Shemmy Shah, man, and keep these commandments, man. Then, Lord, he promised us that we are going to be into the kingdom, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to reach that, man. Yeah. Yeah. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, and verse 11. Yeah. Even this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain toiling place and labor working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffered it. That's right, man. We being buffeted, man, and ain't got no place to rest, man. Buffeted means we got beat down. We beat down. You know what I'm saying? We'd have been beat, beaten, beat for centuries, man. 
we have been dwelling in places that are not our own, man. Our soul of our foot don't have rest, man. We trying to find our way through a dark place, man. We in the valley of the shadow of death, man. And we trying to find our way back home. But through all this, nevertheless, man, we got to keep fighting and understand, man, look through all this affliction, man, and everything is coming. Guess what? I got to be okay with it, man. Because I know that at the latter end, man, I could be a priest if I continue to strive for the greater matters, man. By keeping this law the most high, man, and keeping the faith, right? And doing, and, and we understand when, you know, Christians try to come against us and say, well, you know, you can't keep the law, man, because there's no temple in it. You know, aren't you supposed to go back to the temple three times every year and so and so? We understand that we can't do that, man. But that's why, uh, give me uh, Judges 5 and 11 real quick. Right? That's why the most I said this, man. You know what I'm saying? Make a quick segue, we're going to get back on it. But this is why the most I said this, man, because we got to understand that this, you know, this is the land of our captivity, but nevertheless, we still have to do the things that the Most High requires of us, man, in order to make it out. You know what I'm saying? Read that. This is the book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 11. Right. Now, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of dry water, right. there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. What the Lord say? There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That's what we're doing, man. We're rehearsing the righteous act. What's rehearsing? We're practicing the things that are to come, man. The things that our fathers did before us, man. And the things that we were set to continue to do throughout our generation that we were discontinued from, that we lost, right? We're trying to bring that back, right, in these last days, man, right? And we have to rehearse these righteous acts, man, in our land of our captivity and understand that, yeah, man. This is what the Lord requires of us, man. You can turn that around, right? This is what the Lord requires of us, and we have to do so, man. But at the same time, we got to continue to be content, man, and understand that everything that's here is vanity, and, you know, everything eventually is going to be destroyed, man. Right? Especially all that paper chasing that we be doing. We always worry about money, 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 money. Money's a carnal aspect, man. It's a good thing to have it. It's a resource. Right? It's definitely a, 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 a great thing to have if you have enough of it to, to get what you need. But when you don't have it, you got to be a tip on this hand and hold the most high. It's going to come back around to me. Every time I'm doing the righteous things, man, it's going to come back around to me. Right? Read that. This is the book of Sarek, chapter 30, verse 21. Lock it. This is the book of Sarek, chapter 31, and from the top. Right. Watching for riches, consuming the flesh, right. and the care thereof, dropping the way sleep. Hey, and that's it, man. A lot of us be stressing and losing actual sleep, man, over money. And what the Lord say about money, the root of it is all evil, man. Right. The love of it, man, is evil. When you start setting your mind on money, I gotta have money, I ain't got enough money, I gotta have money. Now you're doing evil in the sight of the Lord, man. Because that becomes your God. And what's the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right? That's what you gotta understand. You gotta consider. Right? Read that. Man, I'm stressing on money, man. Right? 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 Because that's the first commandment. I'm breaking. Right? We always have to keep these things, man, in our minds, man. And know that these things destroy us. Because what is the payment of sin? The wages of sin is what? Death. And we're not trying to die. That's why our people are such in a lower poverty state, man, and in death. Because that's all they think about, man. You know, you see it all the time on, on, on the videos, man, and everything, man. That's all they think about. Got the money lined up and down their horn, man, you know what I'm saying? And they spelling out words on the ground with their money and everything, you know what I'm saying? And they think they really doing something. Yeah, got to yeah, put it up to their ear like they on the phone with stacks of money. But just, just pick it. But that's what this society has made us to understand and, and, and feel that how we are supposed to be successful and looked at as a prominent man or woman is if, if we got money, man. 
you know what I'm saying? But we kind of kind of got to have that Kanye spirit. We got to know that I was once a billionaire and I lost all that money, man. And it's still a problem. You know, you kind of got to have that spirit of like, guess what, man? All I need is a how about send me out shop, man? And nothing else. You know what I'm saying? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 73 and verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world they increase in riches and that's a beautiful precept man you know what i'm saying increasing in riches man you know what i'm saying that's what they do man increasing in riches man the ungodly because that's all you see man like i said on tv man what do they condition our people to be rappers entertainers sports players that's all they want to do man in life that's all we have. I, I, maybe about two percent of us I'm, i'll give it five percent of us that literally want to go to school to be doctors dentists things of that nature but the majority of us especially coming out of the hoods the slums and living in impoverished situations when they ask you what you want to be the first thing they will say i want to be in the nba or i want to be in the nfl so on and so forth you very really see our young ones say, hey, I want to be a doctor. I want to be able to teach my young brothers and sisters how to survive in this place, man. And love their own. You don't hear that. Because we're conditioned in our captivity to learn and to live one way. And that's it. It's to follow after another God. Then bring back stats, man. And we'll do anything to get it, man even killing our own brothers just to obtain a little pleasure for a while and not be content in the ways that we are in having a regular nine to five is not okay in the so-called black and hispanic community because you look down on as a man that's really working and trying to take care of his family you got to be out here literally selling drugs and pimping and making music and things to be something but that's not true, though. right? Read that. This is the book of Luke, chapter 10, and verse 40. Right. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving, right. and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Right. It says, Then heard therefore that she helped me. And Yahweh answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Mm -hmm. But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Hey, and that's it, man. Because Mary understood, man. You know, so this stuff is cool, though, man. I'm, I'm going to be cool <laughs> in the latter end, man. Right? Just like when your house child was walking on the shore, man, and he seen, um, so I stayed my mom, and he seen the two brothers in the, in the, in the, fish, uh, in the fishing boat. And he called out to him and said, hey, man, follow me. Right? Drop everything you got and follow me. Right? And them brothers had things, man, out there fishing me, man, and making money, and they jumped out and jumped into that water and swam to the shore. Hey, man, and follow hard after Christ, man. Because they knew, man, all this stuff is carnal, man. I'm following after the Messiah, man. Right. When it's all through, man. Even if I'm broke down without a roof over my head and I'm sitting on the corner with a cup shaking chains, I got two teeth in my head, right? And I got clothes that have been on for three months, man. Guess what, man? I'm going to pray to you. How about Shimmy? I was shy. Thank you for what I got, man. Because I have to be content with anything I have, man. Because I, just because of that little that I have, Yahweh, by Shimmy, I was shy, saw fit to let me have that. Because he didn't have to break me up this morning, man. He didn't have to put, give me the job that I have, man. The wife that I have, the children that I have, man. The knowledge that I have. The breath that I have in my lungs, he didn't have to do that. But he chose to wake me up to this truth and know that, look, this is all you need, man. But this is your faith. It's sufficient enough for you, man. Your faith, man. Right? What you got, bro? Read, yeah, read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither neither poverty. Verse 8 from the top. 
Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food covenant for me. And that's it, man. The most high, man. This is the type of things that you need to pray for, man. Not giving me neither poverty nor riches. Why right? giving me enough food that's convenient enough for me, man? Giving me just enough so I can be content with that, man. Right? Don't give me a whole lot. I don't need a whole, whole lot. And please don't bring me down to a lower state where I don't have nothing. But just give me just enough so I can make it through so I know where it came from. And I can keep my heart alright and understand that everything comes from you, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And look, everything I have, I'm going to take joyfully and I'm going to continue to try to increase on it. But at the same time, I'm going to keep moving and praising you for everything that you have, right? I'm scraping for pennies, but guess what? All praise to Yahweh for it. Right? All praise to the most high for it, man. Right? I find a quarter, I'm picking it up. All praise to Yahweh by some Yahweh shot. Hey, you know what I said? I appreciate that. You know what I said? Because it's there for me. You know? Now I can feed my family, man. Every time I wake up in the morning, man, all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Forgive me for my weakness, even if I was dreaming of something foolishness. Forgive me, Father. But allow me to get up and keep moving and go to this job and work so I can feed my people. Allow me to make it to another Sabbath so I can come out and feed my people. Right? Feeling content with the things I have, man. Finish what you got, King. Verse 9. Yes, I be full and deny thee. Right? And say, Who is the Lord? Right? Or lest I be poor and steal. And take thy name of my God in vain. See, that's it, man. That's why you don't want to have too much, because a lot of times when you receive a lot, you forget where you came from, man. And you forget what you once did not have. Because now you have an abundance, man. So now you're not praising the most high like you used to, man. And you begin to forget that the things that he gave you, the blessings that he gave you, you begin to forget all these things, man. Because you have so much and you don't want for anything. And everything that you have is right there at your disposal, man. That's what's wrong with these uh, celebrities and stuff. That's why you see a lot of them falling off lately and they dying and losing in the end, right? right. Stressed out, bugged out because they have forgot the most high a long time ago, man. Right. right? And it's time to pay the paper because you have lived deliciously, man. You've lived fat for a mighty long time and you did not give the praise that he deserved, man. So therefore, he's bringing you down because you became proud and you forgot the Heavenly Father. And at the same time, you don't want to have him be at a real, real low estate to where you, you know, you have to go out and steal and take and destroy others to get what you want. Right? That's why you got to pray to have enough. Be sufficient with what you have, man. Just be convenient enough for me that I won't forget and that I won't go out and do something wrong. Right? Please go. Mr. Brooks, right. Chapter 11 and verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is forgetfulness of affliction. Right. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. That's right, man. Because when you start coming up in the world, you know say? You forget all the affliction that you went through, man. You forget everything that, went, that you know what I'm saying, you was going through a lot. Because you feel like, well, man, I don't look to obtain now, man. Everything that I have, man, I got it and I'm moving, man. And I'm doing my thing. But guess what? You forget where it comes from. And when you start to lose everything, man, you start going backwards, man. Why? Why? Where is me? Where is me? What happened? What is going on? Why I can't win? Why I can't do this? You start to forget, man. Those situations you forget. And it's a must that you don't forget where everything you receive comes from. It comes from the Heavenly Father. Whatever a man steps his foot is ordained by the Father. Whatever you have gotten in your pocket is ordained by the Father. Every word that somebody has spoken to you is ordained by the Father. The family that you're in is ordained by the Father. 
the people that you cross paths with, the job that you're at, the school that you're at, the food that you ate that day was ordained by the Heavenly Father, man. From the beginning, before the world was even created, man, he knew at that day, at that time, at that hour, at that very second, what you was going to be thinking, what you was going to be eating, what you was going to have in your pocket, man. Everything comes from the Father, man. Because he's going to take care of you no matter what. The book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Right. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Right. What? What ye shall eat, right. or what ye shall drink, right. nor yet for your body. Right. What ye shall put on right. is not the life more than meat, right. and the body than remnant. That's the thing, man. Ain't your life, man, more worth it? Then what you eat or what you putting on your body, your clothes, is Gucci that more important than your life? Why is Nike shoes on your feet more important than your life, man? See, a lot of our brothers don't think like that, man, because a lot of our brothers kill each other for their shoes, man. A lot of brothers kill each other for that Gucci belt they got on them. A lot of brothers sell themselves out, man, just to look good. You know what I'm saying? You got to... You, you look, you can't even pay your rent, but yet you got a $700 belt on just so you can tuck the front shirt, part of your shirt in so you can walk around and show some ease that you got a uh, belt on that you about to take off in an hour or two and probably ain't going to wear it for the rest of the year. Just because. But you done made that object of God, man. And you done everything you possibly could to get that and you forgot it. Your real power, man, where your life come from. Right? You spend hours and hours at work getting overtime and everything to get those joys you've been wanting. But you gonna spend 30 minutes to read three chapters. Right? You spend a week gaining more and more hours at a job and working on a Sabbath day to buy Christmas presents, man. But you will keep the feast of dedication, man. Right? You won't even keep a, a Sabbath. You won't come out to the highways and byways, man, and wake up your people, man. Let me finish reading that. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they... For they sow not, neither do they reap, right. nor gather into barns. Right. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Right. Are ye not much better than they? Right, because he said the birds, man, they fly around all day. They don't work. They don't do nothing, man. But yet, yeah, guess what? They wake up in the morning and the Most High had that worm come up out that ground right in the eye view of that pigeon, man, so he can go down there and get that food, man. He feeds them birds, right. man. How much more are you, man? Are you not better than a bird? You gotta think about that, man. Are you not better than a bird? But the most high takes care of them. Right? Finish it. Verse 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his death? Right. And that's the thing, man. The most high be asking rhetorical questions, man, because he already know. He'd be like, hey, man, you know, which one of y'all can make yourself taller? Over stressing. You stressing so much, can you make yourself any taller by stressing? Like, right, come on, man, think about it. Ooh. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for remnant? Right. Consider thy lily of the field. Now they grow. They toil not, even when they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Right, and he even took it to the flowers of the field, man, the lily. He said, man, these lilies is out here beautiful. And they grow, they do nothing. They sit, and they just grow. It's your son. And how beautiful they are. But the most I take care of those flowers, too, man. How much I'm on you, man. Even Solomon, man, one of the richest kings in history, man. The wisest man on the earth, man. Right? He wasn't even beautified like a lily flower, man. But the Most High took care of both of them. Right? You got something
This is the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, and verse 9. And it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that's it, man. It's sufficient for you. Who is this? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 hey, man, you know, His grace is sufficient enough for you, man. You know what I'm saying? Everything you do, grace is sufficient enough for you, man. You got to come out of that, that very mind state of, I don't know what's going on, man. I don't understand how I'm going to make it to the next day. I don't understand how I'm going to do this. I don't understand how to do that. You got to put away the mortal thoughts, man. Because this place in America is not for you to be sitting up high. You thinking how you going to build an uh, empire. How you going to, you know what I'm saying, take care of your children for the next 50 years. You understand? This is not your race. How you doing, sisters? Y'all come here the way. Right? So... You gotta come out of that, man, because this place is not your risk, man. This is not where you're supposed to be sitting and hanging your hat. You know what I'm saying? Read that, King. This is the book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for behold, your this is not your risk. Because, verse 10 from the top, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your risk. Hey, man, the Lord said, Arise and depart, because this is not your risk. How you doing, sister? You believe in the scriptures? Huh? You ever heard of the Israelites before? Well, you will be an Israelite, right? God's chosen people, right? <laughs> Keep the commandments in these last days, you know what I'm saying? And repent, right? And put that down. You don't need to be smoking and destroying yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to put that down. Don't destroy your temple. Your body is a temple, man. Right? Put that out, kid. Verse 10, with the Micah chapter 2 and verse 10, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sword of destruction. Because this place is polluted, man, and this is not your rest, man, and you're not supposed to delight in anything that's going on in Babylon the Great. Right? You're supposed to separate yourself from this place, man, and understand that the Most High is not dealing with anything that's going on in this place, man. This is not your rest. Not a place where you can set your hat and be comfortable. Right? You got to haste to get away from this place, man. Right? Separate yourself and be holy to the Most High, man, because the Most High is holy, man. Right? You got to do that by changing your minds, man. Yeah, ain't worth it. This book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, right. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, right. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. That's it, man, and that's how we're going to get out of this world, man. It's by transforming our minds, man, changing the way we think, man. No saying, give me Joshua, 24, 24, 15. Right? We got to change our mindset, man, the way we live in, man, in these last days, man. Right? You got to preach something to say, right? Read that. This is with the first Peter, chapter 5 and verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. That's right, man. And that's simple to play upon tables, man. Casting your care upon the most high, man, because he care about you, man. You know what I'm saying? So we got to wake up in these last days, man, and understand that, hey, the most high is all we need, man. That where we are put our rest in, man, is the power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Right? In these last days, man. Right? I'm going to leave it out with this last precept, man. Look, he saw him bopping his head like he knows what's going on. Yeah, devils, man. Here we go. This is Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. All right. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, right. choose you this day whom you will serve. Rather the gods which our father served that were on the other side of the blood, right. or the god of the Amorites, right. in whose land ye dwell. Right. But as for me and my house, what the Lord say? As, or as me and my house, right. we will serve the Lord. Hey, as for me and my house, man, we gonna serve the Most High, man. Right. Hey, regardless of what condition or, or elements or whatever we in, man, we gonna serve the Most High, man. You know what I'm saying? Until the end, man. Until the Lord take off breath, or man, He take us out of here on them chariots, man. You know what I'm saying? So best believe that, man. But with that, 
I'm going to say amen. Repent these last days, man. And come back to the heavenly Father, man. And say, uh, all praise to your house by Shekinah Shah. And prove your show. Shalom. Next might speak up.